AI is smart and dumb at the same time. See, the thing is, AI has a lot of knowledge. It knows what to answer, how to answer. It's just that you have to be very specific what you want to ask for. So it is like a smart person in the room, the smartest person in the room. And then if you want to know something and if you go to that person and say, I want to know about this, if that person has the context what you're asking, of course, you will get amazing answer. And provided you also mention some other things. Example, let's say if you ask about Java to me, and then I will, just because you asked about Java, I will talk about it for, let's say, two hours. And maybe you don't even want to know about Java for two hours. You just wanted to get some basic information or maybe some specific information about Java. So it depends upon what kind of question you ask and how smart I am to understand the room and the situation of where you are asking this question. Now, AI don't have any context, right? So by default, it will assume certain things based on what you ask. But you have to be more specific in what you ask to get the answer which you want. And that's where we have something called a prompt engineering. So what you do is when you talk to the AI, you send a prompt. Now, based on your prompt, it will give you the answer. Now, it depends upon how good your prompt is. It will give you a better answer. Now, when AI came into picture, so when I say AI came into picture, you might be thinking, okay, we are talking about post November 2022. But no, AI is there from a long time. And maybe we have talked about it before. It's just that it was mostly for the business use cases, right? So all the AI features before it was mostly for the business, let's say Netflix, or if you're playing chess online, if you talk about the product recommendation. So everything was using AI. But now AI is there in the hand of every human being. You just open ChatGPT or Gemini and then you can basically use it. And that's where how to talk to AI becomes important. Okay, now question arise, if you want to send a prompt, how will you do it? So let's say on this screen, we got two Geminis here. Of course, you can use ChatGPT, but I have the subscription for Gemini, so I'm going, I'm going to use that. On the left-hand side, we are going to send some prompt, which are bad prompts. And on the right-hand side, we got a window where I'm going to enter a good prompt. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, the beauty is, or the thing is, if we, if, if I made the same video in 2022, this would have been a better comparison. But now LLM are getting smart day by day. So maybe if you write a good prompt or a bad prompt, you might get similar results because LLM are getting smarter. But when I say you might get the similar answer, the main point here is might. And we don't want to have that dependency or confusion that what output it will give. So if you have a better prompt, you know what kind of answer it will give. You can specify what output format you want. You can specify how it should give the answer. And that's why good prompting or the great prompting always works. Okay, so let me show you some examples and uh, let's see if this is making sense. Uh, we're going to start with a simple prompt, okay? And I do have some prompts ready with me so that will not waste a lot of time. So let's say I want to know about APIs. Now, one of the one of the way you can do is I can say API, okay? So I just want to know about API. Like the moment I do that, it depends upon how smart my AI model is. And since I'm using a pro model here, so it might give a better answer. So you can say it says, uh, could you please provide more context? And in fact, AI says, please provide more context. API is a very broad, broad term. Uh, maybe you can be very specific, like what is, a, what is API, explain the common APIs or stuff. Now, when I say you have to provide more context, maybe if you can give a good prompt. Now, how do you define a good prompt? So there are certain components in a good prompt. Now, what are the four components? The first one is instruction. So when I say API, maybe you can be very specific here. Uh, what you want to know about API. So I can say explain API. Okay, so this is an instruction. Okay, so when I say explain API, that's an instruction. Uh, API being an input here. So if you have talked about two components, the instruction, which is explained in this case, and then the input, which is API in this case. Now, question arises why I want to learn API. There should be some reason, right, in the world. Or maybe you just got up and then you want to have, you want to spend some time with AI, you're asking random questions. But normally, we do have a context. So let's say I'm exploring fast API in Python. Or maybe I'm exploring Spring uh, Web, where I'm going to create APIs. So that is my context when I'm doing that. So I can say, explain API in fast API in Python. Now, what I'm doing is I'm also providing a context here. So this is my instruction, this is my input, and this is my context. 
Okay, now this will help AI to give you a better answer. Okay, so we have talked about three things in the in, in those components of four, the instruction, the input, the context. Again, you can have this sequence in a different way. Maybe you can have instruction, context, and input based on your situation or based on you how you want to give it and how smart your AI model is. So those are the three things, but we have one more. The type of output you are expecting. Uh, so maybe I, I want to say with code example. Now, this is the kind of the output I'm expecting. Maybe it will not give me the uh, the coding just because of these things. And I want to be specific. I want code example there. So this is how you build a good prompt. So this was a bad prompt. This is a good prompt. So you specify the instruction, you specify the input context and the output you're expecting. And when you say enter now, this will give you a better result. So it says API is a, in the context of fast API. In fact, that is saying that it's a context in fast API. Uh, this blah, blah, blah. And then there are multiple components. Again, we don't, we are not here to learn fast API. You can do that on my channel. There's a video on fast API. Uh, then we got code example, which is this bit complex. Maybe I could have given a better context than I'm a beginner. And that would have given me a simple example. So. The more context you add, it will give you a better output. So this is a difference between a good prompt and a bad prompt. I'm using a wrong sequence. Okay, so a good prompt and a bad prompt. Okay, now let's go for the techniques in prompting. So even in good prompts, we have different techniques available. Now, one of the technique is called a zero shot prompts. Now, what is zero shot prompt is you have a question in your mind and you maybe you want to know something you just write a prompt and this is a zero shot you just use a prompt and you will get the answer and in most of the time we do this okay so if you want to if you're curious about something or if you want to know about something instantly you just write a prompt you get the answer you're done you just close your ai uh, model or ai window and you're done but then if you want a very specific output, see, we are learning this concept for the AI engineering, right? Where you are going to build an application which is going to interact with AI and it will behave in certain way based on how AI is responding or the model is responding. Now, in that scenario, you have to be very specific what kind of output you want. So in that case, you can use something called a few short prompting. And to do that, what I will do is I will go back here in this window and I will write a prompt, which is this. Now I'm asking, write a commit message for adding a login button. See, whenever you work on the application, you want to commit those changes and maybe you want to push it on the uh, GitHub. Now, in this case, when you commit a particular feature or you are fixing something, of course, you want a good commit message. And for me, especially, I find it more difficult to... Uh, write the commit message than actually code that feature. And why it's so important is because your commit message matters. Because when you are uh, trying to understand what you have done previously or maybe what commit you have done, the commit message are helpful. And not just for you, even your colleagues need that messages or those messages. And when you enter this, it will give you a commit message. You can see it says feature add login button to a navigation bar. Uh, it gives you multiple options, right? But what if you just want one option? And what if you want in a particular format? Now, the good thing is LLMs are getting smarter. Okay, so it is giving you this type of suggestions. But maybe it will not always give you this particular format. So how do you do it? Or maybe not every model will give this type of format. I'm using 2.5, which is a very good model. But if I use an older model or any cheaper model, maybe I'm not, I will not get the same output. Now, in this scenario, what you can do is you can do, you can use something called a few short prompting. And to do that, what I will do is I will write the same prompt here, but then I also give some examples, something like this. So example one, example two, an example three. Okay, so what it will do is it will check, okay, whenever a user says this particular feature, this is the commit message a user types, or maybe I type. For this particular change, I do this type of uh, commit or message. When I, ha when I have a new change, I want AI to suggest me a commit message. And when I do that, it will give me a particular feature. Now this looks similar, right? But then it's a guarantee that you will get this type of commit message is because you are specifying 
some examples. Now, this is called a few shot prompting. This is very helpful when you want a specific type of output and you're not dependent on whatever model you're working with and what type of answer they will give. So we have talked about zero shot prompting. We have talked about few shot prompting. Now let's go for the next one. The next one is chain of thoughts, or you can say COT. See what happens is when you let's let's go back to our school time, and when you try to uh, when you when you have a math assignment, basically you complete the assignment, you show it to your teacher, and maybe you will not even show it to your teacher. You will see, your teacher will ask what was the answer, and if you give a particular answer, that answer might be right or maybe wrong. Now, if it is right, the teacher is not still not sure. If you have done the steps correctly, and I still remember those days when we used to use different formulas and different formulas were giving same answer. But then teacher wanted to know what kind of formula I have used. So what teacher will say is, okay, show me the homework, right? And she will see the homework. And if she is satisfied with the type of steps I have followed, she will say, good. Otherwise, she will say, okay, this is not how you do it. You might got the right answer, but the, connect, the technique was wrong. Okay. In the same way, I, we can ask AI to show their homework. And this is where you can do something called a chain of thoughts. Let me show an example. I do have a prompt with me. I will just copy it from here and paste it maybe here. Now, when I do that, now based on the model, if I'm using a lower model, I might not get the calculation. Now, this is a simple question where a web server has 100 GB of disk space and then it runs a database with 40 GB. Then there are three user applications which takes 10 GB each. And then I have uploaded, if I upload 25 GB of backup file, how much spa free space I have? A simple calculation. Now, what it will give you is this. The remaining free space is 5 GB. Now, this might be right or wrong. I'm not sure. And that's why your model also gives you calculation. But then it might not give you calculation every time. But what if you want to see this calculation every time? So what you can do is you can write the same prompt. But then I will simply say, think step by step. Now, what we are doing here is we are asking AI to slow down because AI have this tendency of answering your question very, very fast. And if you want it to slow down, you can say, think step by step, take your time. I'm not in hurry. Now, by doing this, you are making sure that your AI model is actually thinking about it and then giving you answer slowly. And you can say it says 5GB, which is the correct answer because you also got five here. But then it is showing you the exact calculation. Here also we are doing it, but there's no guarantee that it will give you calculation. Here, we are saying that things step by step, so it will go step by step. And then it will calculate 5 GB. Okay, now this is called chain of thoughts. You are asking it to think step by step. Now let's move to the next one, which is the role prompting. Now, I use a role prom prompting a lot, maybe for my scripts, maybe for... Uh, learning something. So if I want to explore a new concept, I want AI to teach me. I can't simply ask AI to uh, teach me something. Example, if I say, teach me Java uh, exceptions. And of course, it will try to teach me in this sequence, right? But then AI has no idea who I am and how it should behave while teaching. So we can be very specific what kind of teaching I want AI to do or how it should teach and who am I. So here, what you can do is you can assign a role to your AI, something like this. Maybe I'm, I want to know about smart contracts. So I can say, act as a senior blockchain architect. So you're giving a role to AI and explain the concept of smart contracts to the junior developer using a real world analogy. Now, AI will behave like a smart, uh, the senior blockchain architect, and then it will uh, basically try to understand who it is talking to, a junior developer. So of course, you can't simply use fancy terms. And I can do the same thing here. I can say, explain this smart contract. Let's do that here first. And let's see how it behaves. So it is giving an example uh, of a vending machine. Okay, and then a table. It's still doing a good job. Because I think if I, even if I'm a junior developer, I, I may be able to understand what he's talking about. But again, we are not sure how it will behave, right? So by writing this type of prompt, you are sure how it should think and behave. It might give the same example. You're just giving the same example, but it will think in a real life and it will talk to the junior developer. It will use those terms. Again, okay, this is your role prompting. And based on this, now we can go for our last step, which is, see, uh, when you write a prompt, 
Of course, you you will write the instruction, you will write the input because input is very important. You will write the context. The more context you provide, the better the output you would be. But then it also it is also important what kind of output you're getting. So example, let's say I, I'm making an application and I'm good with backend. And front end, maybe I'm struggling with front end. I want to learn a front end technology, maybe React, Vue. There are so many things, right? Every six months you get something new there. I'm not sure which one to start with. So what I can do is I can ask AI, I'm confused between three technologies. You help me with which one I should go for. Now, if I just write compare React, Angular, and Vue, it will give me a tabular structure, which is a good thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the smaller models will be able to answer this type of uh, things, but it is giving me the table as well and more content. But maybe I'm not concerned about other things, you know, data flow or uh, language or from where it is coming from. My concern, if I want to learn anything from this, is more about how fast I can learn it, or the learning curve, or where I can use it. Maybe I want to focus on those things. So I can be very specific what kind of output I'm, I'm looking for. So this type of prompts will be helpful. So compare the JavaScript frameworks or maybe tools like React, Angular, or Vue. Provide the output. Now this is important. Provide the output as a markdown table with three columns. The framework, or React, Angular, or Vue. The primary use case and the learning curve. Now when I do that, of course I will get the similar answer, but in a good way focused only on those three things, right? Much better than this table because there are some extra stuff here which I'm not even concerned about. Uh, example, when you buy a new laptop and if you want to compare those laptops, you can be specific, you know, what kind of configuration you want to compare. Not the color of the laptop, not the weight. Maybe I'm, weight is not concerned for me. What is more important is the CPU, RAM, the type of GPU it has. So those things, right? So you can be very specific of what kind of output you're looking for. And when it comes to AI engineering, and when you have an application which interacts with the AI, you have to be very specific what kind of data you're working with. And this is not just table. You can also get uh, CSV formats or JSON formats. You can, be, you can specify those things there, and this will be helpful. So yeah, that's about prompt engineering, the basics, so that we can go for the next step, okay? I know we are a bit late with the prompt engineering, but it's never too late. So <laughs> that's it from this video. See you in the next part. Bye-bye.